Women have been marching for their rights for a very long time. What unites these sisters across the decades? Surely at the core, there is a sense of common purpose. In this program, we will look at past and present day women's rights advocates to discover some of the aspirational qualities which can inspire the next generation. In her last speech, Susan B. Anthony, perhaps the best known women's rights leader of all time, said, failure is impossible. The phrase became a rallying cry for the suffragists of the past and is no less inspirational for the advocates of today. Failure is impossible. Four aspirational qualities of the women's rights advocate. Certainly, successful women's rights advocates are courageous. This is one quality shared by Susan B. Anthony and education activist Malala Yousafzai. Susan Brownell Anthony lived from 1820 to 1906, spending her life fighting for temperance, abolition, labor rights, and women's rights. She traveled the country with Elizabeth Cady Stanton, inspiring others with their speeches. In a time when women might be arrested for publicly voicing their radical opinions, Anthony became one of the most visible leaders of the women's suffrage movement. While plenty of folks hated her ideas, Anthony's words inspired women to push for equality. Strength of purpose and the courage to face her critics head on are hallmarks of Anthony's legacy. She said, I have encountered riotous mobs and have been hung in effigy. But my motto is, men's rights are nothing more. Women's rights are nothing less. Activist Malala Yousafzai was shot by a Taliban assassin in 2012. This terrorist act was a murderous attempt to silence her educational activism it had the opposite effect. The world was outraged. In 2014, she became the youngest Nobel laureate in history. Her strength in the face of continued threats on her life has become an inspiration for millions. That now I'm living a second life. And God has given me this new life for the cause of education, and I believe that even death is supporting the cause of education. Even death does not want to kill me. So how can this Taliban kill me then? And I think that I must not be afraid of death. First, I might have been before this attack, but now if even they threat me, I'm not afraid of any threat. I have seen death already. So now I'm more powerful. Now I'm more courageous and I will continue my campaign. Capable leaders must be strategic. Effective multitaskers must adapt in thoughtful ways to changing circumstances. These qualities are apparent in the examples of League of Women Voters advocate, Belle Sherwin, and former Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice. Lifelong learning, growth, and strategic thinking are characteristic of their leadership styles. Belle Sherwin was born in Cleveland in 1868 and worked to change the city until her death in 1955. Education was at the core of everything she did, from her Wellesley College graduation, to her time as a school teacher, to her work educating voters. She created the Women's City Club in 1916 as a haven for discussion and civic engagement. In this work, Sherwin adapted her teaching skills to strategize and navigate new frontiers for women voters. Sherwin chaired the League of Women Voters in Cleveland before becoming the second president of the National League of Women Voters from 1924 to 1934, where she launched many of the nonpartisan voter education programs and initiatives that the League still follows today. Bell Sherwin said, now is the time to read, think, get understanding, 
that government may serve more nearly the needs now so manifest. In college, Condoleezza Rice discovered her talents for international politics after doubting her plans to become a concert pianist. Rice pivoted, but indeed found her true calling and quickly became an established specialist on the Soviet Union. After working at Stanford University and as a national security advisor for President George W. Bush, Condoleezza Rice became the second woman and first African-American woman to serve as Secretary of State. She always believed others should not define your limitations. She learned independence and self-confidence from her parents. Her father told her it was okay if someone doesn't want to sit next to you because you are black, as long as they end up moving. A valuable lesson for an effective negotiator and diplomat. She called her style of diplomacy transformational. This is the best time to be a woman. I want young women to really understand that and believe it. It's not that there aren't barriers. Of course there are barriers. It's not that it's not hard. Of course it's hard. When you think of what our mothers went through or what our grandmothers went through or my great friend Sandra Day O'Connor, the first uh, Supreme Court justice who was a woman, who was told, you know, well, maybe you should be a secretary because women really aren't lawyers. Women don't face that now. Reach for it. Find mentors who can help you to navigate. They don't have to look like you. Had I been waiting for a black female Soviet specialist role model mentor, I'd still be waiting. Some people are going to be first, but I really want women to be encouraged about the opportunities uh, that are there, not, not discouraged about whatever obstacles there may be. Another essential attribute of effective advocacy is the need to be unwaveringly persistent. It is one of the important shared qualities of civil rights activist Mary Church Terrell and Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Throughout their long careers as self-confident and passionate advocates, they persisted against all odds. Mary Church Terrell fought tirelessly for civil rights and suffrage, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg persisted in the many legal battles to ensure women's equality. Mary Church Terrell was born in 1863 and died in 1954. As a student at Oberlin College, Mary Terrell first read about Susan B. Anthony. Upon meeting her in 1898 at a National Woman's Suffrage Association meeting, Terrell said, I hope this association will include in the resolution the injustices of various kinds of which colored people are the victims. Her outspoken nature sparked a friendship between the two women. After years of anti-lynching work and founding the National Association of Colored Women, Terrell now added suffrage to her list of core causes. She stood up for African-American women during the fight for suffrage, speaking out when events were segregated. Mary Church Terrell, the daughter of enslaved people, knew the value of persistence and the power of a well-penned line. In one of her most famous speeches, she said of the power of her fellow African-American women, lifting as we climb, onward and upward we go, struggling and striving, and hoping that the buds and blossoms of our desire will burst into fruition ere long. A current role model for millions of women is Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Growing up, there weren't too many because women were hardly there. So I had one real and one fictitious role model. The real one was Amelia Earhart. The fictitious one was Nancy Drew. <laughs> but later in life, I, I had the good fortune to meet the first woman ever to serve on a U.S. district court. She was Bernita Shelton Matthews. By the time I got to the D.C. Circuit, she was in her 90s. She participated in the, in the suffragist parades. And she picketed the White House, but she would never say a word. She would hold up her sign, votes for women and not speak if she was hassled by the police because 
she didn't want to risk her chances for admission to the bar. She wore a lace collar and cuffs, but she was a woman of real steel. And you think what it was like for me, it was a piece of cake in comparison to what it was like for those women. Advocates who are optimistic are better able to build coalitions. This inspiring and practical attribute unites the personalities of abolition and civil rights activist Ida B. Wells and former First Lady Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama is well known for her famous quote, when they go low, we go high. Ida B. Wells, co-founder of the NAACP, faced many difficult setbacks throughout her life, but she never gave up and remained optimistic. Ida B. Wells Barnett was born in 1862 and died in 1931. From a young age, she spoke out for the oppressed, even if it meant being expelled from school or fighting in court. Giving speeches and writing for newspapers, Wells Barnett used her pen to combat lynching and the oppression of women. Her biographer, Paula Giddings, explains, She's one of the few early civil rights reformers that never becomes bitter. She's angry a lot, but she's not bitter, and this gives her another kind of energy. She faced the depth of the violence, and she had the ability to look at it squarely in the face and say, no, this can change. We can do something. We can reform the country. Ida Wells said, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. Former First Lady Michelle Obama is known for her inspirational optimism targeted towards education. I absolutely believe that education is the key, not just for young women, but for people in general. A lot of the problems that we have in the world come from lack of knowledge. You have to learn how to be a critical thinker. It doesn't just happen. And particularly for, for women and girls, because women still raise the next generation. Women are at the heart of all society. We bring life, we raise life, we nurture life, we feed our families. And if we don't know what to do, we all struggle. So it would seem to me that if we want to solve anything, any major issue that you can think about, climate change, terrorism, poverty, inequality, it starts with an education. Women's rights and equality is an ongoing battle. Past and present role models in the struggle share many similar attributes. These positive qualities can and should be nurtured in the next generation of advocates. If we remain courageous, strategic, persistent, and optimistic, we will have a better chance of reaching our goals. As Susan B. Anthony said, oh, if I could but live another century and see the fruition of all the work for women, there is so much yet to be done. Failure is impossible. <laughs>